There are all sorts of animals out there in the world right now that can boggle the mind in one form or another. And a great example are foxes. Foxes are easily one of the most clever creatures out there, and not unlike certain other creatures, they can adapt to survive in various conditions both big and small. Plus, there are a lot of species of them. So, from the arctic fox to the fennec fox, here's 20 foxes you won't believe actually exist. Number 20. The Arctic Fox Now I'll begin by talking about a fox that you should be amazed actually exists, and also be glad that it's not us living in those conditions. Because of course, I'm talking about the Arctic Fox, one that truly does go and live in various cold weather places. Not the least of which is, <laughs> wait for it, the Arctic, I know, shocker. But wait, there's more. It's more impressive than you realize, because while it's true that there are all sorts of creatures that can live in cold weather, the Arctic Fox is one that can go and reside and thrive in conditions as low as minus 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Think about that for a moment. That's not just below zero, that's leagues below it. Yet for this fox, it can survive just fine. As for how they do survive, it's because of how their bodies are constructed. They have a very furry feet, as well as a combination of short nose and ears so that heat can escape from the body. It also helps they prefer to live in burrows, and when things get really crazy outside, they'll just go and dig into the snow and create a makeshift home. Just as cool, or would that be cold, is that the coat of the Arctic Fox is one that allows it to perfectly blend in with the snow and ice just in case some predators come around. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. And now it's time for the fancy topic. For this fancy topic, we look at this allegedly real picture of a fennec fox that apparently has nine tails. There are a lot of reasons we can call this out as being fake, not the least of which is because it has nine tails. While there are technically creatures that have more than one tail at times, nine is way above what anyone should have. But just as important, this picture is no doubt meant to represent the legendary nine-tailed fox that has permeated pop culture throughout the years, which includes being the inspiration for Pokemon, Digimon, and of course, Naruto. Don't get us wrong, if there was a nine-tailed fox in the world, it would be the perfect confirmation for certain yokai legends, and we could wonder what else is out there. But sadly, it's not real, as of this writing. As always, comment down below using the hashtag fancy topic and let me know what you think. But for now, on to the next fox. Number 19. Fennec Fox we now head to the desert for a fox that's mm, very unique. I'll put it that way. Because the fennec fox is one that goes and survives, despite being the smallest fox on the planet. As you can see, there's a bit of a catch with all of that, not the least of which is that its ears are much bigger than they logically should be. Seriously, those things are six inches long. Now, I'm not saying it's on the level of Dumbo, but yeah, they kind of stick out there. Just as important in terms of sticking out is where it lives. It doesn't just live in the desert, it goes and lives in the Sahara Desert in northern Africa, which, if you forgot, is one of the hottest places on the planet. So how could something so small, in comparison to other foxes, go and survive? Well, it's because it's clever like a fox. The fennec fox will go and be in the shade in the day via its own little burrow and then come out at night to do what it needs to do in order to survive. Now you may think that's a small thing, but the desert at night is a whole lot cooler. Furthermore, its ears actually do allow heat to escape faster so that it never gets overheated and its paws protect it from the hot sand. Number 18. The Bat-Eared Fox If you thought that the Fennec Fox was the only one that had some really big ears, allow me to introduce you to the Bat-Eared Fox, which is another small fox that happens to reside in Africa, but this time has big ears that make it look like a bat. 
hence the name bat-eared fox, obviously. In terms of size, the ears are honestly a little smaller than the ones of the fennec, as they're only five inches long instead of six. But what really makes them feel like bat ears is not just their coloring, but the fact that they really do improve the hearing of the fox. not unlike how a bat uses its ears to see via echolocation. Also not unlike a bat, the bat-eared fox is not afraid to go and share its territory with other foxes, which is usually not how it works because territory is usually really important to an individual fox. However, the bat-eared fox is perfectly fine with going and living with dozens of other foxes, which is honestly kind of cool when you think about it. What would happen if various other species weren't afraid to live with one another? One can only wonder. So while the bat-eared fox may look funny, it's yet another case of something much deeper than you were expecting. Number 17. Tibetan Fox the Tibetan fox is also known as the Tibetan sand fox, and it's one that can be found in very desolate places, hence the secondary name. For example, you'll find it in the High Tibetan Plateau, another plateau I can't pronounce, Nepal, China, Sikkim, and Bhutan, all very remote areas, and yet the fox doesn't really seem to mind. In direct contrast to the previous entry, the Tibetan fox is one that prefers to go and live either a solitary life or one with just a small family, typically with its mate and whatever young that they may have. But if they do get the chance, they're not above going and doing the single life. Their homes, in this case dens, are usually made of certain materials like sand or stone, and they'll even use the natural holes in the environment to go and make a home when the opportunity arises. They'll use their dens to rest during the heat of the day or when they feel threatened, and then they'll come out and hunt whenever they need to. But if you're wanting to know something real unique about the Tibetan fox, then you need to see how it gets one of its prey. Because in those areas in which it lives is a beast called the pika. And what the foxes do is let the nearby bears go and try to get the pikas, fail, and then as the pika gets away, the fox comes and snatches it up. Number 16. The Crab Eating Fox now, do I really have to go and explain what this fox is? I mean, the name crab-eating fox does kind of seem to point out the high points of the creature, so maybe you should just leave it at that. But if you do want to know more, and you're wondering why you've likely never seen or heard of this fox, that would be because of its location. It's one that usually lives in various parts of South America, like Colombia and Venezuela, Uruguay, Paraguay, and Northern Argentina. So it does get around quite a bit. Just as interesting is that it's not afraid to shift its habitat depending on the weather conditions, such as when it gets really wet, it's going to seek out high ground for the season, and then when it begins to dry off, it'll head more down into the lowlands. It's the type of fox that prefers to go and hunt around dusk or pure night. But what's curious though is that despite being very capable creatures, they tend to steal other animals' homes. They're home wreckers, invaders, and whatever else you want to call them. Who even knew? But now for the moment you've all been waiting for. The crab-eating fox is an omnivore, and yes, it of course feasts on crabs. But it'll also eat fish, reptiles, rodents, birds, insects, eggs, and fruit. Number 15. Corsic Fox the Corsic fox is a species that you'll usually find in certain parts of Asia, and despite having a distribution that spans countries, they have a very particular set of places they actually prefer to live in and happily avoid everything else. In this case, they prefer to live in steppes and semi-desert areas, they'll openly avoid anything with mountains or lush vegetation, and the latter of which is very curious because most species prefer to live in those areas. But I guess that even animals have certain tastes that they like to satisfy. Oh, and I do mean semi-deserts. If it's a full-on desert, they're going to avoid it because they don't like snow either. 
These are some picky foxes. Just as important, the foxes that are more than happy to stay away from anything human related, and they're openly known to go and avoid human disturbances, so you're not likely to find one of them unless it's by accident or just plain luck. Another curious thing about the Corsic fox is its fur coat. As you can see, some of them have a bluish gray appearance on their head and tail, but then the rest of them will be something like an orange color. So it is a bit of a special fox, and you honestly have to believe that there are other picky creatures out there just like it. Number 14. Red Foxes now, I'm pretty sure that you all knew that there were red foxes in the world because they're easily one of the most popular and talked about. And for those of you who went and watched The Fox and the Hound, well, Todd was a red fox. What may surprise you though is the fact that this is a fox that has quite a large range around the world. Unlike our previous picky fox, the red fox is just fine with living in the forest, the grasslands, the mountains, or the deserts. And if that's still not enough for you, how about the fact that you can also find it on farms, suburban areas, and even large communities? No matter the place, large or small, if this fox thinks it'll be able to live there, it's going to do so. It's actually one of the most well-known features of the fox, its craftiness and its intelligence combined. And if you've heard the phrase, smart like a fox, then you should know it's basically based off of this one species. That phrase also applies to how it eats, because while it does have a basic meal plan that it likes to follow, it'll openly and willingly go and change up said diet in order to fit the availability of the area that it's in, including eating fruits and vegetables that it can find. Number 13. Silver Foxes Keeping the color theme going, because why not, we now look at the silver foxes, a much less known fox species, but one that deserves to be talked about for all the right reasons, mainly because they're an actual offshoot of the red fox and represent about 10% of their numbers. How does that work? Well, because the silver foxes are ones that have a melanin defect in them, that makes it so that their usual red fur is actually one that becomes silver. That rarity and uniqueness of fur coat honestly makes them rather special in the world for all the wrong reasons because hunters do go and try to catch them for their coats and some farms will even breed them so that they can get their coats more easily. A sad yet familiar trait when it comes to the world of animals. When they are left to their own devices, the silver foxes are known to be hunters that don't mind the opportunity that's in front of them. But like their red fox brethren, if food's not around, they'll eat fruits and vegetables in order to stay alive. When going after more meaty prizes, they'll use their ears to better locate their prey and then pounce upon them so that they can't possibly escape. It's pretty ruthless, but it works for them. Oh, and they can be rather ravenous. Even being able to eat multiple pounds of food each day, whatever it takes to be satiated, right? Number 12, the marble fox. If you won't ask it, I will. How in the world did they get the fox inside of the marble? And furthermore, how big is that marble that it can fit the whole fox inside? These are the questions that keep me up at night. Oh, what's that, Assad? Oh, it's just a name? Well, it's not literal. Thank goodness, because I was worried for a moment. In reality, the marble fox is one that honestly doesn't really look like a fox at all, mainly because of its fur coat and how greatly it differentiates itself from all other foxes in the visual sense. But not only is it a fox, it's actually a rather common one. Even with that, there are some discrepancies in terms of its actual lineage. Because in truth, the marble fox is one that doesn't have a clear line of creation. There are some who think it was the result of a red and silver fox breeding, and others think that it has connections to the arctic fox. I honestly don't really know the truth, and that makes them a whole bit more curious, wouldn't you say? Sadly though, because of their fur and its high quality, they're also hunted down so they can be skinned and their furs sold off. Number 11, the cape fox. All right, a fox in a cape. 
we can see it. It could possibly hurt the camouflage aspect of the fox, but if it wants to go for that, oh, it's just called the Cape Fox. I really need to be better on the uptake. Apparently, the Cape Fox is one that's made South Africa its home, and apparently it's also only the native fox from that area of Africa. While they're not the biggest foxes around, they are impressive in their own right, not the least of which is because of how they're incredibly agile. Their quickness is in part due to how their bodies are shaped. If you look at their tail, you're going to notice that it very much serves as a kind of counterweight to the rest of the frame so that they're able to go even faster. The Cape Fox preys on insects, mice, and other small animals, so very much in line with certain other foxes in the world right now. But still, they're honestly rather special in their own right and thus should be appreciated. Number 10. Cross foxes. Now really, what do these foxes have to be cross about? They're so adorable. Oh, ironically, the cross fox is very much like the silver fox and obviously not angry at all. They are a breed of fox that come from the red fox, but have certain melanin issues that make them look different. In this case, their fur has streaks of brown going through it on the back and shoulders. And as you guessed it, when you look at the section, it looks like a cross. So thus, that's why the cross fox has its name, not because it's pissed off all the time. However, if you do want to go and see the cross fox, you'll have to do a little bit of traveling more than likely. That's because they tend to reside in the true northern parts of North America. In this case, Canada, or the very northern reaches of the continent. So you know, bring your hiking boots if you want to get to them. There are claims that once upon a time, these foxes were more populated down in the United States, but as you likely guessed, the fur trade got to them because of their unique coats, and this is why we we can't have anything nice. Number 9. The Tree Fox Also known as the Gray Fox, I'm pretty sure you can guess why. The Tree Fox is one that's capable of living both in very high elevations and low ones as well. Though somewhat logically, those who live in the higher realms of the world are larger than the ones who live closer to the Earth. In terms of where you can find them, they honestly have quite a large range going on everywhere from North America to South America. And I do mean that literally because you'll find them in certain parts of Canada and then you can go all the way to Colombia and have the same result. They prefer deciduous forests, which incorporate brushy woodland areas. However, they're also not opposed to areas where farmlands and woodlands happen to coincide. They also tend to like being near water probably because they know that it's smart to always have a water supply close to you. Not unlike other foxes I've talked about, the tree fox is one that likes to be alone, unless it's with its family. And also, like other foxes, they'll mark their territory with their sense so that others don't come in and try and claim it for themselves. Number eight, Darwin's Fox. The Darwin's Fox is one that's a bit more rare than you might have guessed, mainly because you'll only find it in places like Chile. As for the name though, as you likely guessed, it was one that was found by Charles Darwin once upon a time during his exploration of various islands and places in the western world, and in this case, he found it off San Pedro Island. At one point though, it was believed that the fox was just a subspecies of another breed, but after a larger population sect of them was discovered, people then realized that it was much bigger of a species than was originally thought. Their diet includes mammals, reptiles, Tiles, beetles, and vertebrates, fruits, and berries. But there's a bit of a catch with all that. As I've already shown you, foxes are not exactly picky at times with what they eat. As such, they're not afraid to go and get creative in order to survive. If you're not catching my drift, they're carrion eaters when they need to be. Now I honestly have to wonder if Darwin got to witness that when he found these creatures, but I guess we'll never know. Number 7. The Colpeo. 
The Colpillo is a species that is very special in a variety of ways. That's because it's the second largest native fox in all of South America, and true to its wording, it has a lot of places that it can try to live, having been located in various countries as a result. They truly like a wide variety of habitats, which include broadleaf temperate southern beach forests, rugged and mountain terrain, deep valleys, deserts, and high plateaus, so that's why they're quite widespread. A curious thing, though, about where they live is that it truly goes and affects just how they operate, because in some spots of South America, they prefer to be nocturnal, but if you go to another area, then they'll be diurnal or another cycle entirely. They prefer the solitary life and are known to only get serious with interactions when it has to do with breeding, and then raising the infants. The Colpillo has various ways to communicate with others, including using sounds, poses, and even scents. Number 6. Kit Foxes now I'm heading back to the desert where we will discuss the kit fox. These are another species of fox that are known to be a bit small, but as I've hopefully proven to you, size doesn't really matter in this case. Due to them being in the deserts of the world, they're incredibly hardy little foxes. So much so that they honestly choose to stay in the desert instead of going to a place where things might honestly be better for them overall. Furthermore, when you look at their body, you're going to notice a few things. First and foremost is their color scheme. It's a grayish hue that allows them to go and blend in with the desert at times. And in terms of their frame, they maintain a rather light frame that allows them to dash across the sands. Very helpful when it comes to hunting prey. Just as important is how they handle the water supply. They choose not to drink very much, and then when they eat, they mine whatever they can from the source. Underestimate this fox, and it'll be at your own peril. Number 5. The Bengal Fox I'll move back to Asia for a very unique looking fox known as the Bengal. This is a fox that has a long tail, so long in fact that it technically accounts for 60% of its own body length at times. What's more, it has perfect control of that tail, using it perfectly for when it runs and then holding it up vertically when it wants to make a turn. That's one smart fox. You'll find the Bengal fox in the Indian subcontinent in places like India, Nepal, the Himalayas, and other spots, and they prefer the foothills and non-forested areas like thorny scrub, open grassland, semi-desert, and arid environments for their homes. However, they're not afraid to get close to humans, and the areas that they inhabit should it suit their needs. Furthermore, while they can be solitary, they've been known to be friendly to others of their own kind and even share their dens should that need arise. Number 4. The Hoary Fox Next on my list is the hoary fox, which can be found in South America, but apparently it's a false native to South America, so it may look like it was naturally born there, but apparently it wasn't. Like certain other foxes that I've already talked about, the hoary fox is a small but very quick and agile one. They're known to dash around to get their food because their bodies allow them to do so, but there's a catch with this. Because while they're indeed foxes that can be fast, their teeth are not really the best. They don't need to see a dentist. It's rather that their teeth are better suited for things like invertebrates instead of going after the larger game that many other foxes are accustomed to. And if you're looking for a more precise location, you can find them in the open woodlands, bushlands, and tree areas of the tropical tropical savanna in Brazil. Number 3. The Swift Fox now I've noted that foxes on my list are either big or small depending on species, but that really doesn't clarify things so much. In the case of the swift fox, however, I can give you a good example of how big it really is. With a swift fox, it's about the size of a house cat. Even more so, they have rather large ears that, like a few before it, don't really seem to match its body, but it doesn't really seem to mind. The swift fox will reside in the Great Plains of America, next to the great airports, no doubt. 
and they do love being in prairies and grassland spots as well. As you can tell, they're called swift for a reason. That's because their bodies are ones that have truly thin limbs. Their legs are almost stick-like, and their bodies aren't that full either, which would explain why they're typically nocturnal creatures, because they would get in less danger that way. And if that doesn't work, they can always run, because at maximum speed, they travel about 40 miles an hour. Number 2. The Pampas Fox Now we head to the Pampas Fox, which you'll find in the literal Pampas of Argentina near the Steppes area. But you'll also find them in Paraguay, Bolivia, and Brazil. Despite the name, you would be forgiven for thinking it might be a bit too small to be a fox, because it's not really big at all. Still though, it does manage to survive, and you have to have appreciation for that. Now if you don't know what a pampas is, that would be the big open flat area that's very humid and yet has tall grass. It's a little bit of an oxymoron in a way, but the fox just seems to like it. And furthermore, while it may have exotic tastes at times, it prefers to be carnivorous more times than not, including eating field hares, armadillos, and various rodents like field mice, guinea pigs, and even birds. Easily the coolest part about this fox is that if you look at its history in terms of evolution, it apparently can be traced back to a species that scientists say is over 5 million years old. Number 1. Pale Foxes and finally, we come to the pale fox, which might just be the most unique one on my list for the simple reason that it really doesn't mind hanging out with the neighbors. You see, they don't just have burrows, they have communal burrows. meaning ones that are interconnected and long enough for all kinds of pale foxes to come in and join them should they need to. This is a stark contrast to the vast majority of foxes that prefer to only rely on themselves or their immediate family, and as omnivores, they eat rodents, lizards, birds, insects, eggs, fruit, and vegetation, which is a nice, diverse palette. Found in Africa, the pale foxes have a very light fur coat that allows them to go and blend in with their areas of habitation. They're not that big, only about a foot and a half long, weighing less than 10 pounds. That might just be why they always try and work with others, because there are strength in numbers within the animal kingdom after all. And that's all from the world of foxes. Were you outfoxed by some of the species I revealed to you today? Did you feel like a fox in the hen house with all of this new knowledge? And which ones do you feel were most foxy? Let me know in the comments below. Also, check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you next time.